Oh, here we go. Okay. We're doing things right now. I guess clear all the areas, go to the camp, come out of the camp, and then... Here we go with our fight against the boar. This, is our, this will be our final fight against the boar, by the way. So here's, here's where he's going to be doing a little bit more, a few more pouncing attacks, where he did, as opposed to the first time, first couple times we fought him, he did usually just a bunch of uh, straight up uh, just slash attacks. And then we go, we got him already. So obviously, you know, your, your strategy there would be, you know, a direct head-on attack kind of like I did, or just, you know, keep dodge rolling, avoiding the, uh, the pounce attacks that he does. We got the White Fang. That's was a horrified look, wasn't it? So yeah, the uh, your your ideal strategy there would probably be to just you know obviously dodge roll if you can, and just avoid the pouncing attacks as much as possible, and then uh, brute force attack whenever you can. Just keep dodge rolling, or just trying to strafe avoid the uh, the pounce attacks. The slash attack should be easy to avoid. You kind of jump or just you know dock, jump out of the way, whatever you need to do. So, which is pretty much the same strategy against anybody, in, any any boss enemy that you encounter in this game. Probably the exception are going to be the Final Fantasy characters that attack pretty much the way I've been showing you. Try to let them take the first swing and then dodge that, and then counter their attacks with continuous uh, continuous combos. And then depending on depending on who the boss is, who the character is, whether or not you follow up with another combo or back off and wait for them to miss again. And what you don't want to do in those cases is end up in a, is end up missing, and that you're going to be vulnerable for their combo, which you cannot break. You can't suddenly suddenly attack them and break their combo in most cases. And when, uh, when I say combo, it could be like an actual you know one two three combo attack like Sora does here. Or if it's just a you know a repeated move that repeat over and over again, like Cloud did in the battle in the uh, uh, Colosseum, where they ju he just charges at you multiple times over and over and over again, just charge, 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 charge. That's the same kind. It's essentially still a combo. Ah, see, I got knocked down and lost a bunch of money there. Oh, uh, okay, they didn't hit me. They're throwing uh, bananas on the ground. God damn it. There's a lot of money here. There's one still here somewhere. There we go. Got it. Yeah, all right. <laughs> that was bad because I was like, watching my money just drain away. I was like, "Come on, stop it, bitches! You better, uh, you better fucking stop." <laughs> These guys are having a hard time holding up their MP. More I'm worried about MP out of uh, Donald than Goofy because Donald does a lot of spell casting, but she needs a lot of MP for. Obviously, Goofy can just straight up attack, and I'm fine with that. But Donald, not so much. I don't think he has the strength for straight up attacks. Oh, hell, these bitches again. I missed with Sonic. Damn it. Damn it, I think I got hit with two ba two bananas. What the hell? Are they fucking. God damn it, you bitches, you slingshot me. You little fucking pink whores. I'm out of MP, so I can't do a, a sonic attack. Oh, don't hit that banana. Ah, oh, bitches, fucking. Fucking hell. I was running here to check on Jane. Hey, where's Jane? What's wrong, Tarzan? Something's coming. Jane, danger. 
Jane near, near treehouse. Sounds like trouble. Let's go. Alright, I'm going to save up here real quick. And I'll, uh, go after, uh, Jane, but I forget through saving. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, I'm going to admit to you that since the last cut, I've actually, it's actually been a little while since I've, uh, played. In fact, to be honest, I'm actually having to re-record an entire session here. I could go into long detail as to why I'm not going to do that. I'll just, I'll just, I'll, I'll be succinct and say that, um, the last recording session, uh, the recording session that I'm redoing right now, corrupted, so I lost about an hour of footage, but I'm re-recording that hour right now, that's what I'm doing here, so if in a few parts or in a few episodes, things seem different, you know, things look different over here, if I sound different, um, there's a reason for that, I've got a new microphone that I'm recording with that I didn't record with when I, when I recorded this session the first time, um, I'm probably wearing a different shirt, things probably look different up here in the camera, um, that's why, because I'm having to re-record about an hour's worth of content. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing right now at this point, but I'm pretty sure it'll come back to me pretty quick. I mean, I know this game pretty well. Uh, let's see. I know I'm in the deep jungle. Um, Jane is not here, so I'm gonna th I think uh, she's been captured. We need to go find her. And uh, give me just a second here. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. We've kind of checked something. I'm, I'm going to make sure that I didn't have any corruption issues, so I had to, you know, check something. Okay, I think what I'm doing is I need to go find, uh, and find Jane, because she's not in the tent. Let me see if I can look at the journal. Maybe that'll tell me what I'm supposed to be doing. It might help me. Chronicles. Uh, Deep Jungle. Mm, Sora got separated from Donald Goofy. Tarzan rescued Sora when he was attacked by Sabor. According to Tarzan, Sora's friends are somewhere in the deep jungle. Meanwhile, Donald and Goofy found a gummy block that might be a clue to finding the king. After Sora, Donald and Goofy found each other at the camp, they learned about the gorillas and their nesting grounds from Jane. Kairi, Riku, and the king might be there. Tarzan asked Kerchak to be the leader of the gorillas for permission to take Sora and friends to the nesting grounds. But Kerchak wouldn't trust Sora after Clayton attempt to shoot Turk. Shortly after the Heartless appeared at the camp, Jane and Turk got abducted. So I am at that part. Okay. Uh, characters and new characters. I don't think we've looked at this yet, so I'm going to go ahead and look at this now. Jane Porter. A naturalist who's in the jungle with Clayton. I apologize if, if I end up reading this in, in later episodes or something. Um, like I said, it's been a while since I've played this particular part, or this game in general. So I'm having to re-record this session, so I apologize if you're seeing this again. Or we'll see this again in a future episode. Um... Knowing with Clayton, her guide to study gorillas, she met Tarzan in the jungle and is gradually teaching him about human ways. She's courageous and will face any danger for her research. Exploring the jungle, she encountered Tarzan in 1999. All right, Clayton, a veteran hunter, he acts as Jane's guide on her expedition to the jungle. He thinks of animals only as prey and dreams of their money to be made selling gorillas to zoos back at home. All right, Turk. A young female gorilla and Tarzan's close friend, she is protective of the other young gorillas and acts as their leader. Unlike the other gorillas, her curiosity about humans is greater than her fear of them. Kerchak, boss of the gorilla pack, he was against letting Tarzan join the group, but Kala's resolve won him over. Kerchak worries that Tarzan's contact with people will bring danger to the gorilla community. Alright, and we've got Kala. The gorilla who found Tarzan in the jungle, she has always helped him and defended him even when he was scorned by the others. Kala is not happy about Tarzan's contact with people, but she knows it's important to him. Alright, and that's all we got for now. Okay. Uh, the Heartless. Probably got some new enemies that we encountered here. Power Wild. Heartless resembling a monkey. With great physical strength and agility, they often strike with combination attacks. Avoid close range battles with them if possible. Okay, and Bouncy Wild. Unlike Power Wilds, they attack from long range with a slingshot. They scamper about during battle, making them difficult to hit. Um, also, I'm pretty sure I've already... I don't, uh, if I haven't shown this off, I'll go ahead and tell you now. But if I have shown it off and said so, I apologize for repeating myself again. But uh, those Power Wilds, or the Bouncy Wilds, uh, when they hit you, they uh, they tend to... They're, they're sort of like thieves. When they hit you with their attacks, they, drop, they, they knock money off of you. So, you need to try to pick it up as quick as possible, otherwise they're going to be getting away with it. So, if you want to keep your money, first of all, don't let them hit you, which is what you want to do anyway. But if they do, make sure you pick up your money as quick as possible. Okay, we need to go rescue Jane and Turk, which I believe is in the treetops, which 
is this way? I don't mean to hump the. Oh, here we go. Let's not hit the desk. Let's actually hit the enemies. There we go, sorry. That's a good dum dum. Use the key. Keyblade works better when you hit the enemies. Don't hit the table in front of them. Alright. Oh, we got more. Okay. Here's the bouncy wilds we were just looking at. Alright, very nice. And we got a power shard. Okay. That's something else that uh, when I get to, when I'm done with this particular re-recording session, um, in a few episodes when I've when I get back to ba basically there's like a session before this, a session after this. I'm recording a part in the middle because that part was corrupted. When I get back to the original session, my items, my gear, my maybe my level, some things are going to be different. So if that's so if they're different. And my, my, my game time, my play time, and stuff like that, my money. If that's different, well, that's why, because it's a completely different recording session. So, alright. Uh, take a shortcut here by climbing this. And now. Let's see, I, got, I don't have Super Chip. Okay, I'm just trying to remember where I am in the game. Because, <laughs> like I said, to the. At the point, at this point that I'm already recording, that I'm recording, I've already completed the entire game already. So I've played this part already once, and, play, and played the entire game all the way through already. I'm just having to re-record this part because it was corrupted, like I said. What the? What's this? Try time trial? I don't have a clue what this is. I'm, no, I'm not doing that. I have never seen that before. Even when I played play this game, the, the, I, don't, I don't know if that's final mix only, or if that's, you know, I, okay, whatever. <laughs> that's completely new to me. Okay. If that's always been there, even in the original PS2 version, I had no clue. Right, I'm going to try to take a shortcut. Well, I failed in the shortcut attempt. Go, I can just go over here and wait for the hippo to rise. I nah, don't nah, do that. Right, come back over here. Jump over here. Jump on the pink. And then jump again. Okay. Yeah. We climb this one. We should have a shortcut. No, I didn't miss those chests back there. I can't get those chests right now. I need a special jump ability in order to do that. But now, I think if I take this, right, this one here. Yeah, here we go. This will take me to the tree top or the climbing tree is much easier. Yeah, here we go. Okay. I took the really long path, the long way to do that. The short path is you want to go to the lagoons, go from the lagoons, climb the, climb, go across the hippos, climb that uh, vine, turn around, climb the vine behind you, and you'll be here. The big black fruit looks suspicious because that's a point of contention. That's what we need to destroy. That's, I don't want to say it's a boss, but that is our target in this area. We destroy that black fruit, this black fruit right here, there's black right here that I'm whacking with Sora's Keyblade. <laughs> and that will, uh... That will complete the area. So that's our target. So it's not, it's not really a boss, obviously, because it's not fighting back, but... Obviously, you can ignore all the enemies here and just go for the, the fruit. It's the quickest way to get through this part. Downside is you can't lock onto it, I don't think. At least I haven't been able to. Oh, you can lock onto it, okay. There we go. Did you hear that sound? We've obviously defeated the Black Fruit and we've won the area. And that's how you save... Jane and, uh, Turk. Clayton came to the tent, and that's the last thing I remember. Clayton. Gorillas trapped, Turk ran. We must help the gorillas. Okay. Um, they're over there, by the way. You can see there, Jane and, uh, Turk are over there. I think what we need to go now, we need to go back to... We're going to take a shortcut, I think. Well, that's a shortcut. We need to go back from the treetop, uh, through here. And we're going to jump down. Take this part again. 
we need to head back to uh, back to the camp essentially but go back past the camp toward the uh, I guess, I, guess uh, I think it's called the bamboo field something like that if you haven't if I haven't shown those before you can use uh, telephone sorry about that uh, you can use uh, magic abilities on those white mushrooms and if you match the white mushrooms uh, to the ability they want you to, they want you to hit them with, you get uh, a little reward for them. Uh, they do they do a certain type of uh, uh, animation. If you see them using that animation, you want to use a, a, a the corresponding magic in order to uh, you want to hit them with the corresponding magic. I think you have to do it three times, and you will get. Uh, you'll get a nice reward from it. It's usually a pretty rare item, something like mystery goo or something along those lines. Things that will actually be really helpful in uh, crafting some pretty uh, pretty decent uh, items, gear, uh, uh, such as gear later on. For example, if you see, uh, see those white mushrooms, it looks like they're, they're shivering, they're holding, you know, I got their arms across them, they're shivering. You want to hit them with fire, you want to hit them with fire magic because they're essentially saying they're cold. They want to be hit with fire magic. Shut up, phone! Um, if you see them like fanning themselves, it means they're hot. They want to hit you with, with blizzard magic. And there's other uh, animations that they do that, if you use the right, you know, if you know what it is, use the right, use the right magic on them. They'll that's what the they'll uh, they'll do a. Uh, there's other animations they do for other magics. Is my point. I don't know what they all are, um, but in this area, the, you'll see three of them. One is going to be the, the, the waving of the fan because they're hot, the chilling because they're cold, and the third one with a little red light over their head. I think you have to use... Actually, I'm, I'm really not sure. I've never been sure about that. One. But the hot and cold one is pretty no! obvious what you need to do. If they're fanning themselves because they're hot, hit them with ice magic. If they're shivering and trying to warm themselves up, hit them with fire magic. You know, so The rest of them I don't really know off the top of my head. Clean. Not Clayton. <laughs> Not Clayton. And it's boss time against Clayton. Well, the not Clayton, I guess. Whatever. Take him out. What you need to do is uh, pretty much ignore the monkeys if you can, but your target is actually Clayton himself. He's uh, pretty mobile for a guy who jumps with just a shotgun. His only attack is the shotgun, I believe, and he's not hard a boss for the first for the first phase. No, Clay does not learn the ability to hover. There's actually an invisible enemy there. It is an invisible, uh, uh, like, lizard, chameleon kind of thing. Um, I believe your target here is, uh, is still Clayton, but you want to reveal the lizard because that way it's easier to, you know, deal with him. There he is. Also, I believe once you do, you can, you can still attack Clayton while he's riding the lizard, but once you defeat the, uh, lizard, he'll come off the, he'll come off the lizard, and then you can just straight up attack, uh, Clayton. Now the, the lizard is still technically alive, but we want to target Clayton. You can attack again. You can attack Clayton while he's on the lizard, and if you beat Clayton while he's on the lizard, you'll actually need to win the fight. You don't have to worry about fighting uh, the lizard at all. But it's actually easier to go ahead and fight the uh, lizard for a little while to try to get Clayton off of uh, off of him, because it's easier to hit Clayton on the ground than it is while he's on while he's riding the lizard. And there we go. With Clayton defeated, we've won the fight. We don't have to actually, like I said, we don't actually have to fight the lizard. Again, it's good to go ahead and at least hit him a few times to get Clayton off his back. But if you can't hit Clayton while he is on the back, go ahead and target him. It's fine. Once you beat Clayton, you win the fight. Obtain the power of healing. Learn magic spell cure.
Ow, my face. <laughs> 